Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and today we're just going to look at this little, well, it's a rake set, a lock pick rake set from AliExpress. It has 11 rake profiles, which all do fold back down with a little bit of coaxing into this handle, and it snaps shut using this little uh, sort of ball and socket mechanism, if you like, and it comes on a little keychain like this. So, um, first things about this, and I'll get the price out of the way, this was about £9.50 in UK money, somewhere around 12 US dollars. Um, I think it was free shipping from AliExpress. Um, obviously, prices will change on the day, the seller of the tool, exchange rates, etc. Uh, shipping costs, you know, the, you know the deal. And I did buy this with my own money. Um, a couple of weird things about it straight out just when, when you look at it is it seems to be both good and bad in equal measure so the finishing of it uh, it just came like this it really strange both sides as well it's got this sort of scratching and I can't tell why or how that's happened it does have some breaks we'll get on to whether I think they're effective or not in a minute but what I would say is that the design of this folding tool isn't that bad so you do have these profiles some of them fold out really easily some of them are somewhat stiff and because these are I mean they're quite thick um, around 30 thousandths of an inch thick but they're, they're quite thin shanks in terms of the height you've got to be very careful as you try to pull these out clearly it's either meant to be tight or it's meant to be loose. Um, I don't think it's meant to be both. So just some manufacturing tolerances that uh, vary. They vary, don't they? Um, then this does snap in like that. This side, let's try this side. It's very loose. Does it snap in? No. So some of them are tight and snap and some don't. But what is interesting and what I do like about this is this part of the tool itself, that little folded over lip. Why? It's because that groove there allows this lip to lock in and with that little hole there, snaps in. That, it's a bit, it's a bit wide, not awful, about 13 millimeters across. And that is a little thick, but not too thick for a rake, especially if you're gonna hold it like this, which is how I probably would. You know, I'd, I'd probably be raking a lock like this or upside down. That isn't so bad. And it does lock it in really well. I'll just get out the other side, which is a little looser. Before, we'll do a demo of these rakes in a minute, but uh, let's get this loose one out and fold this one back in without bending it. I can't imagine the steel's particularly strong. And you can see as I'm pushing down here to try and close it, if I push down too hard, I know that would either bend or snap. So I'm just gonna try and push it from the thicker part of the shank. But this, let's see if that locks in as well. Yes, actually not too bad, a little, little bit more play but very very usable right on to the profiles clearly these are all quite slender profiles for raking and you see here that you've got uh, in that range lots of different let's call them cuts or bittings if they were a key you would describe these shapes as bittings I don't know what steel this is made out of. I would say it doesn't appear to be very good quality steel. Um, it's helped a little bit by the fact that the steel is thick, so it makes up for the um, the lack of strength and the thinness or, or the shank height. But it's not great steel, so I would be careful when you use these. Uh, and like I said, it won't work on locks with more extreme bittings. I've got a lock with a key, so here's a, a lovely cutaway master lock 19 and just look at the extreme bitting on this and then compare it to these now most rakes wouldn't actually be able to get in there to rake lock with this extreme bitting this is a extreme example but i was just trying to show you that these shallow cuts on the rakes aren't going to help you in high security locks with really really good bittings so let's try to find some lower security locks with uh, not too extreme bittings where these rakes might work. And um, yeah, we'll see if we can get a few opens with this. So first up, we have rake number five, according to the etching you can just see there, is a quad peak rake, and that doesn't look too bad. I'm gonna support the rake with my finger and uh, just pop this in. 
I'm going to start out quite low and we're just going to uh, cycle the uh, rake in the, the lock like this and oh we've got the open so yeah it's a not particularly hard lock to pick this one uh, and the bitting isn't so bad I guess on this rake it's not bad cuts on it next up we have rake 4 which is an interesting little profile it's got quite a big peak at the tip and this is probably the one of the floppiest ones it's got quite a bit of movement but we'll we'll try and get this to, to work we can uh, just go into this lock and see if I can encourage an open. Yeah, we got the open. There we go. It looks like we have rake nine and this cheap 50 millimeter Chinese lock. Let's give that a rake and oh, already in. This next rake is going to be quite tricky. This is uh, tool number three, and that's because this keyway is very tight and this tool is very thick in terms of side to side. So getting up into this curved warded keyway can be quite tricky. So it's going to go in gently and start raking little tension, increasing tension as we go. See if I can't coax and open with this. Ah, we got it just lots of bouncing of the tension, but we did get it. And I have to say, I couldn't find really any practical use for a pick like this, at least nothing which couldn't be picked um, using the flat side at a sight angle. Case in point. And this demonstrates just how soft that steel was. This is this pick after just using the back side of it to uh, pick that little padlock. It's got a little bit of a curve to it. Because of the low shank height and shallow bittings of these rake tools, it made me think, could I use it as a dimple lock rake on low security dimple locks, like this smiley dimple lock that I have here, which um, you can see here has shallow bittings and a keyway which I should be able to put this tool straight down the center of. So I'm going to pop in my tension tool and my rake and I'm going to try to rake this open. Let's see if it works for me. Oh yeah, I think, yeah, we got it. It's a little hard because the tension tool itself gets stuck in the keyway, but it does work on this low security dimple lock. Again, it's worth pointing out that that wouldn't work on even a medium security dimple lock with a decent bitting because the highs and lows are too extreme on a key like that for this type of lock. So what do I think to this 10 pounds worth of Chinese lock picking tool? Um, hard to say. I mean, it's one under a tenner delivered. Does it work? Yeah, yeah, on some um, low to medium-ish security locks with small keyways uh, where the keys don't have extreme bittings or room for extreme bittings these work they, they work fine you know i think for some low security padlocks and those kind of things i don't hate these yes they're a little bit prone to bending i don't think the steel's particularly good they are quite thick metal so it can be a bit of a pain to get up into those tightly warded keyways but um you know you can probably get a bit of fun out of this for for the price of a tenner. It's not awful. I've seen a lot worse than this. They are at least usable if you aren't expecting miracles from them. So what do I think to this £10 worth of Chinese lock pick set? Well, I do have some mixed opinions on this. I don't think it's that bad for £10 price of entry. You know, um, if you're going to approach a lock that you didn't have the key for, didn't know what you were uh, trying to pick, you'd have to go from rake to rake to try to see if you can get an open if it was a medium to low security lock especially a padlock with a small keyway where you don't expect there to be a great difference in the uh, cut heights on the key this will give you a fair chance of finding one of these rakes which will work in that lock and if you're a hobbyist looking for just a little bit of fun with a tool like this it actually does supply you with uh, a good amount of fun. I actually had fun 
going through my little padlock collection, seeing what rate and what didn't. Um, is it a serious lock picking tool? Yeah, again, on the fence on that one. Certainly this is not for professionals. Um, there are certainly better options. Uh, probably a handful of good rakes from a good quality pit set would probably do you a better job. But like I said, for £10 for all of these rake profiles, if you're looking at low security locks, they work, it is fun. I can't take that away from it. The tools are a bit thick in this dimension here. Uh, and that does help strengthen the pick because they're very, very shallow shanked um, in this direction here. They are, however, quite soft metal. And they are a little bit prone to deforming. The finishing on these isn't too bad. I didn't need to uh, polish them or sand them or anything like that. You can see here that they are perfectly usable out of the pack. There's no sharp edges. I'm not cutting myself on these. Um, they're actually tumbled pretty well. It would be nice if there was some consistency in the way that these fold out. Like I said, some of them feel like they are designed to lock in. Like this one's really giving me some um, trouble. <laughs> and that other one at the other end basically just flops in and out, no problems. And again, if they are stiff, you've got to be very careful you don't push from the tip because it will damage the tool. It does have a bottle opener on there, which um, you know could be worth the price of entry on its own. I do like the way that the locking mechanism works on this. It's simple, but it's actually quite effective. You've got this little folded over piece here, locking into the grooves on the underside of the picks. You've got this little indent there, which clips in. And it does actually hold things in pretty tight, even on the really loose ones. There isn't much movement, all things considered. There is one other thing that makes me quite like this tool overall, and it's not because the tool itself is particularly good or particularly effective. It's because I think this would be a really good base for modification. These little screws can be undone. You can release these picks. You can use these as a template. You could make your own set of uh, rakes, picks, etc., uh, quite easily. And I may well do that on a future video because this little uh, mechanism here where it clips over and locks the picks in works surprisingly well. The tool isn't massively thick and I think you could make yourself a pretty cheap custom pocket folding key ring pick set, whatever you want to call it, relatively easily. Yes, it'd be a bit bulky, but I think you could probably use this as a base for making a better, more customized picking set. So whilst I don't necessarily think it's the best tool overall, it's not too bad, I guess, um, for a tenor in terms of uh, having a useful set of rakes. I would love to know if you've ever had a go with one of these. Do you have one? What do you think? Has it lasted? Have you broken it? Is it worth at least a tenner? Let me know in the comments. I do value your opinions. I read all the comments and I reply to as many as I can. If you like this video, hit that like. It really helps my channel out. As does subscribing if you think I've earned your subscription. All I can really say is happy picking and I'll see you next time.